Hello guys, my name is Nash. Welcome to Thursday Tales of Terror. TTT. Today's case was suggested by White Windy84 who sent in the request via email. Thank you for suggesting. To be honest, I wasn't aware of this case even though it's from my country, but it's a pretty shocking case. The case happened in 2014, but the murderers did not get caught until five years later when the victim's remains were found in a metal cooking pot. The murderers cannot be named due to a gag order, which I will explain why later. So there's very little information about today's case, but I I really wanted to cover it because it's so tragic and I think people should know the story behind this case. So what exactly happened? Now the crime was said to have taken place sometime in March 2014 but the victim's remains were only found on September 10, 2019. The remains were found in a flat at Block 52 Chin Sui Road. If I'm not wrong, Chin Sui Road flats are pretty old and the units there are really small and it's mostly one or two rooms. It's not like the newer flats today where where the corridors are much more spacious and you have more light coming in. The corridors at the older flats are tighter with minimal light coming in and when you open your door, your neighbour is just right opposite. So if you take three steps forward, your neighbour is just right there. That's how small and tight the space is. So the incident happened in a one-room rental flat on the 8th storey of the block. On 10 September 2019 at about 8.30pm, the police received a report that there was a weird and rotting smell coming out from this particular unit where the family stayed. It was like a really strong pungent smell. The police arrived not long after and started conducting investigations. They also interviewed residents of the block only living at 1am. According to one housewife, she said the police brought with them a metal pot when they left. Inside the pot was a bulging bag but the contents of the bag was unknown. Upon further investigation, the police found the burnt remains of a two and a half year old girl in a metal cooking pot. Pot. Court documents said that the girl's body was allegedly burned before her remains were kept in the metal pot that was further encased in a sealed box placed under the kitchen stove. It was initially assumed that the remains were that of a fetus. It was hard to tell due to the passing of time. Xingming Daily News reported that the corpse was charred, which meant that it was burned to the point where it has turned completely black. It was also said that three days before the police were alerted about the smell, volunteers actually came down to give supplies to the unit's residences. The volunteers noticed then that there was a foul odour and they thought that the scent came from a neighbour's unit. Neighbours described it as a strong smell, with one describing it as something rotting wafted through the corridor at least a week before the body was found in the unit. Neighbours also said that the family from that unit did not interact at all, mostly just keeping to themselves. But from what they noticed, two brothers were living in the flat. It was noted that the elder brother was still in prison while the younger brother has not been seen after he spoke to the police regarding the incident. According to a retired neighbour, he saw a young woman going in and out of the unit and he believed that she was close to the brothers. The neighbour also stated that the brothers have an older sister who was previously in a drug rehabilitation facility but that's all he knows about the family. At this point, we don't know who that young woman was that was seen coming and leaving the flat or whether she had any any relation to the cops in the metal pod. Prior to the two brothers, the flat was allegedly occupied by a couple and their children who were still attending primary school. The brothers only moved into the unit three to four months ago. The same retired neighbour also said that one of the brothers, who appeared to be in his 20s, has intellectual disabilities. He was often seen playing music really loudly and blasting the television volume inside the unit when the door was left ajar, and he rarely left his home. There's also another man, believed to be one of the brother's friends, who would often come by to visit but not much is known about him. What we can gather is that the brothers, the people going in and out of the unit, are not the interactive type. The police, however, will look for the unit's previous residents to assist with the investigations. Sadly, the dead toddler's biological parents were charged with her murder a week later on September 17, 2019. The couple were taken to court. The father was 31 years old and the mother was 30. Like I've mentioned before, they cannot be named due to a gag order. That's because the court wanted to protect the identities of their other children. The couple has been married since 2012 and this is the woman's second marriage. The couple has seven children with the dead toddler being the youngest. 
It's not known whether all the children are from the current marriage due to limited information I could find. They were also the registered occupants of the Chin Sui Road flat. Both suspects have been remanded since June 2018 for other unrelated offences. It was reported that the men had been previously charged with two drug-related offences and one count of rioting. On September 9, 2019, before the woman was charged with this murder, she was sentenced to five years and two months jail after pleading guilty to three drug-related charges and one count of theft. It is suspected that the couple tried to burn the remains of their child after committing the murder in 2014. As they were unsuccessful, they reportedly kept the remains sealed up and hidden in the refrigerator without anybody noticing. In the beginning, media outlets were able to retrieve more information and activities about the couple through their Facebook accounts. And at one point, a Facebook post was put up on September 24, 2019 showing purported photograph of the couple and their family with images of young children clearly visible. The public Facebook group was accessible by all. By the end of the day, the post has been shared more than 4,500 times. But because of the gag order, a lot of the details were taken down unfortunately. And the Facebook post was being looked into for potentially breaching the gag order. But what we do know was there is a lack of remorse there. The couple allegedly went out as a family with their other children after their toddler's murder. It's just so sickening. When the couple were remanded in 2018, it is believed that the children were either taken away by friends and relatives or social services. The only person living in the flat since then is the man's younger brother who has an intellectual disability. It was said that the people coming in and out of the unit were friends of the suspect, the older brother, and they only came by to give the younger brother some food. Now, one of the Chinese newspaper articles speculated that the younger brother had accidentally stumbled upon the remains while looking for food at home. Allegedly, the remains was kept hidden in the fridge for five years. I actually saw some comments on forums. Some people said that the younger brother took it out from the fridge to cook it because he thought that it was meat and he didn't really know what it was due to his disability. So if you put the whole story together, it kind of makes sense. The poor girl was missing for five years. If her remains were kept in the fridge, I would think you would still be able to cover the smell like the smell would just be contained within the fridge or the kitchen. But after the younger brother took it out of the fridge, that's when the stench started spreading throughout the unit and even outside of it because neighbours said that the younger brother usually would leave the door ajar. So the smell is bound to travel. And when he realised that the food was not edible, he placed it under the kitchen stove instead of putting it back into the fridge. And because of that, the smell of the remains started to spread then. I think that's what happened. So a few questions to ponder. If the toddler was already two and a half years old before her death, how did the corpse manage to fit in the metal pot? Had it been mutilated? Considering that the toddler was two and a half years old, she should have interacted with other relatives and neighbours before. How was her death unknown when it was so sudden? If the parents were arrested for drug abuse in 2018, has their flat been searched before? If so, how was the cops not found then? During the time when the suspects were detained, the children should have been under the care of friends, relatives or the relevant authorities. Why did no one notice that the toddler was missing? Was the girl's wearing about looked into or investigated. When the neighbours were being interviewed, they said that the couple had a lot of children and they always played along the corridor as a group. It was hard for the neighbours to know who was missing since it's hard to notice who the kids are individually when you see them as a group. Hence, when one of the children disappeared five years ago, they did not feel that something was amiss. Members of the public were clearly in a state of shock and led to several members of the parliament asking if the girl's death could have been picked up earlier. How is it possible that in this day and age, especially in Singapore where we are considered to be a very safe and peaceful country, that a girl could have gone missing and unaccounted for only to be discovered five years later under morbid circumstances. If you're wondering, the baby girl was registered in official documents. According to Social and Family Development Minister Desmond Lee, the child's disappearance went undetected as her family had told social workers that she was being looked after by relative, 
and authorities had no reason to suspect that she had come to any harm. He also added that a two-year-old child will generally have no interaction on a regular basis with agencies. Addressing the well-being of these other children, Minister Desmond Lee reassured that the children are all being taken care of under alternative care arrangements. Minister Desmond Lee also mentioned that his ministry will continue to provide the necessary support to ensure the children's safety and welfare. The Ministry of Social and Family Development, MSF, also said it is looking at ways to further strengthen its network of agencies and community organisations in the aftermath of the discovery of the toddler's death. MSF said, in the meantime, we are reviewing how the network of agencies and community organisations can be further strengthened. On the other hand, the prosecution requested for the toddler's father to be remanded for three weeks for psychiatric observation. He was remanded at the complex medical centre at Changi Prison. The toddler's mother would also be remanded for psychiatric observation. On February 5th, 2021, the Attorney General Chambers AGC announced that they will be proceeding on a murder charge against the biological father of the toddler, while they applied for a discharge not amounting to an acquittal of the murder charge against the deceased mother, after reviewing the facts and evidence of the case. This means that the prosecution will not be proceeding on the murder charge for the woman, however, she may still be prosecuted over the same offence should there be new developments. The woman's defence counsel objected and sought a discharge amounting to an acquittal instead, but it was unsuccessful. On 2nd March 2021, the woman was granted the discharge but not amounting to an acquittal and her husband still faced the murder charge. He faces the death penalty if convicted. The girl's parents still face a slew of other charges, some of which are similar to each other's, including neglect and child abuse. The mother is alleged to have committed the following. Between June 1, 2013 and March 2014, Il treated the girl by heating her with a belt and hanger, feeding her chili padi as punishment, slapping her face and thigh, pinching her thigh, and flicking her fingers and lips. Between March 2013 and March 2014, Il treated two other children, a six-year-old boy and another little girl aged three, by slapping them and hitting them with a cane, hanger and belt. She also slapped and punched the boy and fed him with chili padi and garlic. March 2014, willfully neglected the girl by choosing not to provide her with adequate medical aid despite there being a medical emergency, such that she died. Also, in March 2014, perverted the cause of justice with her husband by burning the girl's body and putting the remains in a metal pot. On December 23, 2017, gave false information to a liaison officer from the Ministry of Education that the girl had been taken away by her father as they were undergoing divorce proceedings. The officer did not follow up on the girl's Primary 1 registration exercise as a result. On February 8-9, 2018, ill-treated four of her children by leaving them in a Chinsui Road flat without adult supervision and without adequate food and water. On February 9 and 20, 2018, gave false information to Child Protective Service officers from the Ministry of Social and Family Development that she had six children instead of seven so the officer would not conduct checks and follow up on care arrangements for the girl. The father also faces three other unrelated charges, including one of rioting along Beach Road in front of Golden Mall Food Centre at about 3.30am on April 5th, 2018 with three other men. The group allegedly punched and kicked a victim and using a helmet to hit him. Two months later, he was also charged with consuming methamphetamine in June 2018. He was admitted to the Drug Rehabilitation Centre twice before in June 2011 and 2016 for abusing drugs. His third charge was for failing to return to the community supervision centre after leave was granted for him to be employed at a food supplies company from November 2017 to April 2018.
However, these other charges will be stood down pending the resolution of the murder charge. A charge that is stood down is temporarily put on hold, but the prosecution can choose to revisit it at a later stage. On November 16, 2021, the woman was offered bail of $80,000 in a district court. Now, as of today, there have been no more updates regarding this case, which I'm assuming that the father will still face the murder charge. We're just waiting on that. There is also no specific details on what happened when the couple were remanded for psychiatric observation. Unfortunately, that's all that I could get for today's case. It's really tragic and sad that the parents killed their own baby daughter and I'm not really certain if the other children in the family knew what was going on, whether they did witness what happened or did the parents kill the toddler behind closed doors because I cannot imagine how traumatic it would have been for them to witness that. One question that keeps popping in my mind when I read about the case was, was the toddler accidentally killed or was it planned? What exactly happened, we don't really have the details. Her body was burnt and kept for five years. For five years, nobody noticed her disappearance. Nobody suspected. It's just insane. Like I've mentioned before, members of the public were very upset over the girl's tragedy and some even left flowers and toys in front of the unit. A Buddhist monk even came to pay his respects in front of the unit. He was seen placing flowers and tearing up. Even though he didn't know the family personally, he was very heartbroken by what happened. We all are. Heard about the incident, paid his respects on Tuesday morning. He said he doesn't know the family personally. What the thing is a hand pump. Yes, in Japan, it's a hand pink thing. For now, there are more questions than answers, such as what really happened and why it took so long for the remains to be found. So we have come to an end for today's case and video. Thank you for supporting my channel and leaving lovely comments for me. I do read them all. Thank you for watching my videos. I'll see you again next Thursday with another video. Till then, stay safe, drink lots of water. Bye.